What's up guys? I wanted to make a quick video on how to diagnose a faulty three-phase motor. Uh, this video is made for pretty much anyone that works in a factory or works in industrial uh, maintenance. I'm going to be discussing you know, three-phase AC motors and basically how to diagnose a faulty one, what to do when a motor is not turning on. And um, yeah, you want to be sure before you make the decision to tell your company to buy a new motor. So if you watch this video in its entirety, you will be confident in that decision. Quick review of the components. You got your power coming in. For this example, I didn't put in any controls wiring. I have a whole video on understanding motor controls that kind of goes into, you know, the circuit that turns your motor or your contactor aka starter on and off um, generally you'll have like a 24 volt or 120 volt circuit that turns on your starter or contactor that will energize your motor for this video i'm just going to focus on the power circuit you may notice that i have white wires the reason for that is i only have white wires at my house um, i had a big bundle of black wire i don't know where it went but for this example, we're basically simulating the power circuit for a 480 volt three phase motor. Generally, if you have uh, color labels, you'll have some brown, orange and yellow tape on the three phases coming in. Boy, brown, orange, yellow. And that's coming in right here. Then you got your main circuit breaker. You can turn on and off. Um, if your circuit breaker is tripped, It'll be in the middle position, in which case you would turn it off and turn it back on. Uh, in this example, I go through the circuit breaker, through a set of fuses, then into my contactor. So that's your, your power going to the motor. And then your control circuit is going to turn this contactor on and off. Um, again, we're just going to focus on the power circuit and basically how do you make the call? Yeah, this motor is definitely bad. So stick around, it's gonna be a quick video and I'll tell you exactly how I do that as an electrical maintenance technician. All right, so if I'm called out to a panel because a motor won't turn on, the first thing I do is I open up the panel. I put on my gloves and my glasses and all my PPE. You always wanna be aware, is the panel energized or is it not energized? If you're expecting a dead circuit, then you would you know, turn everything off, then verify. You wanna look at your power circuit you also want to look at your 120 control circuit because that can come from another energy source. So if you turn off the power in your panel, it's possible that you would have energy from another source, 120 volts coming in. So you just want to, you know, poke around with your meter, put one lead on ground or neutral and just poke around measuring AC voltage and look for power. But if I'm called out to a panel and um, the you know, they say the motor is not turning on. The first thing I do is I physically look at the motor, you know, see if there's any obvious things going on. And then I go right here and I reset the circ uh, the overload on the, um, on the motor starter. So you reset your overload. If you hear a click, then that means that you had a tripped overload. Then usually I'll just try to run it again. If it trips again, then I'll do further diagnosis. If your circuit breaker is tripped again at the mid position, that means there's a, a bigger issue. If your motor's generating high, higher power than it's supposed to, the first thing that is supposed to fail is your motor, your overloads on your contactor. Those will be rated a little bit above what how much power your motor consumes or current. So if you have a 10 amp motor, you'll set your overloads to like 12 amps. And if your motor is running at 12 amps or more, or maybe 15 amps um, for a few seconds and that will trip. That's the first point of failure. In this circuit, we have circuit breaker, fuses, and um, overload. So the first thing as an electrical maintenance tech that I would do is I would reset the overload, try to operate the, the motor again. If you know there's still an issue, then I'm gonna check power. I'm gonna take my multimeter. This is a $20 multimeter. Obviously, this is not the one I use at work. I go and I set it to volts AC. Hopefully you can see that. And I measure voltage. Again, I'm wearing gloves at this time because everything's hot. I'm wearing my PPE. I verify that I have power coming in. This panel is 483 phase. So I go phase to phase, phase to phase, and phase to phase. I want to see 480 volts on each of them. 
Then I find a good ground and I measure to ground, 270 to ground on a 480 panel. If it's a 230 panel, I believe it's 135 about to ground. So you go each phase to ground and then each phase to phase. Make sure you don't have a problem with your power coming in. Once you verify that, in this circuit we got a main disconnect or main circuit breaker followed by a set of fuses. Next thing I would check would be the fuses. Um, you can do that one of two ways. I can either just recheck that power at the bottom side of the fuses, make sure the power is coming through, or I can turn off the power, again very important that you turn it off, and pull out my fuses, that's how you check a fuse, take your multimeter, go over to ohms, ohms measures your resistance and you go across the fuse like that look at that that's actually a bad fuse you want to see a short circuit on your fuse so very low ohms you want to look at the symbol there's a big M right now which means mega or million ohms big M is million or mega little K is kilo or thousand and then if there's no symbol that's just normal ohms. If you measure a fuse and it reads one ohm or 0.1 ohms or two or three ohms, that's good. That means that you have you know, a continuous path across it. If you see mega ohms on a fuse, it's a bad fuse. So then you replace that. Figure out if the fuses are good. If you have a blown fuse, again, you put everything back the right way. Turn on power, try to operate it again, hit the button, it runs. If you have another issue, then you need further diagnosis. If you blow another fuse, the main circuit breaker trips or an overload trips, it means you have an issue with the motor. It could be mechanical binding. If a motor is trying to move and it's stuck, then that will cause high current, or it could be an electrical issue. So at this point, if the motor is still failing, I'm going to go ahead and check to see if my motor is shot or burned up or needs replaced. So that's the next segment. I'll show you how to do that. If I go through and I check all my fuses and I reset the overload and I check the power coming in and no matter what I do, the motor keeps failing. I know there's a problem. I'm probably running high current. I could verify that by throwing the clamp on there, measuring amps AC, turning on the motor, and at this point it sounds like, you know, the motor's turning on for a little bit. An AC motor is going to jump up to really high amps for the first two or three seconds, but then it's going to stabilize. We want to look at that stabilizing number um, and compare it to our, you know, full load. So we're probably operating it higher current than we're supposed to. So the overload's tripping or a fuse is blowing or the breaker keeps tripping. What could be happening is when your contactor sucks in, you got the power coming through on two of the lines and one of these sets of contacts might not make be making good connection inside of there. That's called single phasing and when that happens, you'll run at about double current. So what can, you can do to measure single phasing the best way to do it, detach the power lines from the bottom of the contactor, energize the contactor. This is going to suck in. And then you can just take your voltage readings down here and see 480, 480, 480. Again, 270 to ground, 270 to ground, 270 to ground. Again, that's volts AC. Always be mindful of your units on your meter. So at this point, our motor keeps tripping out, keeps faulting out. I want to turn off the power. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check the internals of the motor. What I generally do is I just start with a standard multimeter and I start in the panel. There's a few things you can do. You check it and from the panel, we could say, yeah, this is a good motor. Um, 
if it fails this test, then we want to go all the way up to the pecker head and start taking stuff apart just to be completely sure. I'll review that at the end of the video. But the next thing I would do is if my motor kept failing and there was no obvious signs of mechanical binding, so I would come down here and I would remove the power lines going to the wire. We got T1, T2, and T3. But be careful. You want to put them back in the correct order. You can use tape to label the or order or you get a sharpie and just go like one, two, three, make little notches, take a picture. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but you want to put it back in the way you found it when you're done. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the motor. So what I want to do is detach the three power leads going to the motor. So I take out the power lines coming to the motor. And the first thing I can do with just a standard you know, multimeter, get these lines out. Again, if it's not obvious, this is not really hooked up to a motor. Surprise, surprise, it's all a simulation. But I'm gonna show you guys how to check this stuff. And again, this is like what I do. I've been doing, this is the exact process I've been using for the last, I don't know, seven or eight years. So, so here's how I test the motor. So I take this, I go down to ohms, and I measure the resistance between the coils. Coils have very low resistance um, between them. So I go coil to coil. You want to see something like 5 ohms or 10 ohms or 2 ohms. You don't want to see kilo ohms. You don't want to see mega ohms. That little, that little, um, hold on, that little letter in front of the ohms is way more important. You gotta look at that. There's an M now, sometimes there's a little K, sometimes there's nothing. So when you're measuring the coil resistance internal to the motor, you wanna see real low resistance and you wanna see pretty equal resistance. So if I saw, you know, six ohms, 6.3 ohms, 5.9 ohms between the coils, I would say, yeah, the coils are good. They haven't melted. There's no serious issue with the coil. That's good. And then more importantly is the insulation on the motor. So these three wires are going to run out to the motor and they're going to, going to go into the motor and they're going to run through some coils that are going to generate a changing magnetic field and that makes the motor spin. And then all that's going to be insulated or sealed with like a kind of like a silicone epoxy type material. It's all going to be insulated. So we want to measure, make sure that insulation is still good. So for that, you take one of the, you know, one of the legs again, you want to remove it from the contactor to make sure there's not an issue in here. And, uh, you know, so you put one of your leads there and you measure resistance to ground. You get a good ground coming from the motor. And you just measure it. And you want to see an open circuit or you want to see in the mil millions of ohms, mega ohms. If you do this and you see lower resistance, then you know there's a problem. There's poor insulation on the motor. And what I would do is I just go up to the pecker head, pop the cover off, detach the wires going into the motor and measure the wires going into the motor to the chassis of the, pe of the motor or the pecker head. And if you see a lower resistance, lower than mega ohms, you know that's a shop motor. And then, you know, tip typically what they'll have you do is, is get a mega meter or a mega. And you go to the pecker head, you put one of the leads on one of the wires going into the motor while everything's detached. And then you put that other clamp onto, you know, the ground of the motor, like the actual body of the motor. And it will inject like 500 volts and it will measure the resistance of that insulation. So in conclusion, check your fuses, verify your contactors working properly, measure the resistance between the coils inside the motor, measure the resistance between the ground of the motor and one of the power lines going into the motor while, you know, those three coil lines are detached from the rest of your circuit. Use a mega if you have one at the pecker head. If you don't have access to that, just use a multimeter, but use the best one you can find. And definitely make sure the power coming in is good. And after you check all that, uh, you know, electrically, you have a good motor. 
you, then you know it's a mechanical issue, something's getting bound up or stuck. If you want to learn a little bit more about motor controls, um, I have a video called Understanding Motor Controls. It's actually my most popular video. Check that out. Um, teach you everything you need to know about, you know, how to turn a motor on and off and how to troubleshoot it. I have a lot of other videos about uh, automation and instrumentation and controls as a career path. Check those out. I got some fancy new stuff from Amazon. I got a light. I got this microphone. I don't know about the microphone. Let me know in the comments. And, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff I bought on Amazon. I'll put some links in the description. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.